Welcome to episode 256 of Clarity Compressed. 256 episodes today. We're talking about the same thing we always talk about with a little bit of a different twist. We're going to be talking about, obviously, clarity and how to make it meaningful again. Let <laughs> the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. I love reminders. You know I love reminders. Reminders are these little things that I put, little phrases that I put all over so that I remember the things that are important to me, re intentionally remember. I'm not brave enough. That's not the, bravery isn't. It is bravery for a different reason. I'm not brave enough to do a tattoo. And it's not because I'm afraid of the pain or I don't want to do it. I'm afraid that I'm not going to like it at some point in the future. And I'm worried from a design standpoint, not from a mentality standpoint. From a design standpoint, like I'm afraid to get the clarity flag tattooed because what if I want to change it? I'm afraid to get little phrases like this because what if I want to change it? I'm afraid that whoever does the tattoo isn't going to do the job that I needed them to do. So all the saying, so I surround myself with all these other reminders. As a result, I have these bracelets that remind me of things. I have a phrase on my shirt over here, no crisis can win. Made that up during the beginning of COVID as an example or as a phrase that the auto industry could rally behind. And a lot of other people did as well. Just as a reminder that, hey, like we've been through a lot. We'll be through a lot more. No crisis can win. We talked about it last week on the podcast. All the different crises that came along for our great, great grandparents or some of our grandparents too. And how that didn't stop us and our perspective shift in that is the game changer. Go back and check out that episode. I think you really enjoy it. And so I got a couple things to share with you. This first one is this little LED box that my son, Miles, who's been on the show, 16, bought me for Christmas. It's a little pixelated thing. It's cool. You can like toggle through and put little images and gifts. I could put a little Rick, Rick roll on here. Little Rick Astley, never going to give you up. I can put that on there. I'm not going to do that today. Just the Clarity logo that he designed. He tapped that in for me. So this is little thing is going to sit on the shelf behind me here just so you know what it is, says Clarity. And also yesterday or two days ago, I got some stickers delivered for my agency congruent. And we have this phrase, make it meaningful. It's kind of become our little calling card for 2023. It will be our calling card in 2023, make it meaningful. And it's got a little picture, a little silhouette of our building on there. We also had a second version, maybe it's just a little thought bubble, just make it meaningful on it. We have it on the wall in one of our conference rooms. And the point is that whatever you're doing today, whether you are, I don't know, I don't care if you're, you know, picking up garbage. I don't care if you're waiting tables. I don't care if you're digging trenches. I don't care if you're pushing paper, if you are taking customer service calls, if you work at a car dealership, if you work at an agency, if you are at home taking care of some kids, if you're about to have some kids, if you're taking care of someone else's pet today, I don't care. All the things that you can be doing today, you can decide to make it meaningful. Tie it together with something that matters. And if you're, what you do in life connects with another human being, it automatically matters to an elevated extent. A lot of things out there, a lot of people are doing things, but not a lot of people are doing things that are meaningful to them or to other people. And a lot of that has to do with your mindset, how you're approaching the task, even the mundane tasks that you're doing. Sometimes you just, you just got to do it. Sometimes you just got to clean. Sometimes you just have to do the thing. But that doesn't mean your perspective and your mindset does, can't really affect how that, uh, the output. And if anything, it can affect what's inside. We had a team meeting for Automotive State of the Union or a SOTU, the media company I have. I think you'd really enjoy following it if you're not ASOTU. We do a morning show, we have weekly shows, we have a daily email, which is a ton of fun, ASOTU.com. Um, we had a team meeting and our team is you know, 10 to 12 people depending on the day and, uh, or who's at the meeting. And, um, we're, things are going well right now, right? We have a lot of momentum going. We're doing great things. We're about to go into a major event of the year. The NADA show in Texas is coming up in a couple of weeks and uh, social media is picking up and we have a lot of the community contributing. All the things that you want when you're building uh, a media community for a purpose. And at the end of our team meeting, I said, hey, I just want to take a minute because everything's on the up. And a lot of people say, focus on the good things. Don't talk about the bad things and all that. 
I disagree with that in a lot of ways because you have to remember the bad times to give you perspective on the good times. And then you have to remember the good times to give you perspective on the hard times. And so I said, hey, remember back into October and November of last year. Does everybody remember how we felt? And we had just come off our big event, a SotoCon, and we were kind of like came off the high of that. And then we just found ourselves in the trenches and everything seemed harder. Making content seemed harder. Working with one another seemed harder. Team dynamics were breaking down a little bit. We were having communication issues. And I think everyone started to get frustrated that we didn't have the traction we had like 30, 60 days ago, or that we just came off the momentum of a big event, right? Like getting home from vacation, <laughs> like all that stuff. Christmas is over now. Vacation is over now. But we had this 60 to 90 day period where we were really struggling every day, day in, day out, doing the thing over and over and over and over again. The same 10 steps every day. The same things, putting out another piece of content, answering that email, doing the logistical thing, whatever. And I said, hey, remember how we felt then in that discouraging time when you were like, man, this is kind of tough. I don't know if I want to do this. All those things. It's good to remember those times now so that you can remember that it passed and you can remember that it's gone and now you're in a different place. So if you're listening to this today, I hope you remember the tough times if you're in a good time. Don't get lost in the good time. Yes, appreciate it, enjoy it, savor it, but don't forget the fact that it was hard before you got to the good time. So that way, when the hard time comes up again, maybe you'll remember that, oh, this too shall pass. Maybe you'll remember that the meaningful part of doing the work is the intention you put behind it. And let me tell you this, if you're in a tough time right now, remember the good times. Remember the fact that there have been ups and downs, and now it's just a down, and because you're in a down, guess what? Good, because now you're going to get to learn something that you never would have learned when it was an uptime, because when it's an uptime, you don't learn nearly as much. Ups and downs. I don't know where you are today, but I know that either side, this applies to you. So I hope that you make it meaningful, whatever it is that you do today. I hope you stay close. If you need anything, please DM me, send me a message. I'm here for you. I'm walking the path with you. Keep pursuing clarity. I'll see you next week. We can